Hi everybody, in this video we're going to be looking at other options for black after the move bishop to b5. Well after covering g6 we did definitely cover the main line but there are several moves and in this case we're going to be looking at e6 which are very valid options for black and have been played a lot as well. This move gained quite a bit of popularity around 2013-2012 when Boris Galfond was playing this regularly and several other players were following him. Now. The main idea for black in this variation is that on the next move he can go knight to e7 and then force us to take on c6 and of course he would be happy to take back with the knight. Of course white can also opt to go bishop takes e6 in this case which is one of the major lines and after something like castles we enter a completely different position once again than the lines with g6. Um, black would hope to go d6 and e5 one day and even though this is very interesting I'm gonna opt for something else. Um, and I'm going to advise you to castle after the move um, e6. Now after knight to e7 we do have to prepare for this move a6. One of the logical moves would be c3, but the lines after a6 and b5 and for uh, very often d5 for black as well turn out to be quite unclear and again this is not the most popular line and the move rook to e1 is usually preferred here by white players. Black goes a6 and we play bishop to f1, just in time to get the bishop back to a natural square. Here black has two options. Um, the best move is definitely to go d5, which is probably quite a logical move. Uh, another option would be g6, which would be a good move if it wasn't for the direct d4. And after something like c takes d4, knight takes d4, bishop to g7, knight takes c6, knight takes c6. Why well, it's a little bit better because you can get into a pretty pleasant... Uh, variant of the Moroxy structure after c4 and white can comfortably continue with logical moves such as knight c3, bishop to f4, rook c1 and so on. And of course this sort of hedgehog structure is quite solid for black but it's definitely not equal by any means. So bishop to f1, d5 and here another major branch starts. Um, one of the main moves here that I've tried myself is e takes d5 and after knight takes d5, d4. Um, I believe this was played by Magnus Carlsen, black and go knight to f6. And white might be a little bit better here, but games have proven that black's doing alright. Bishop to e3 is the main line over here. And once again, I feel that even though there might be a small edge for white. Games have sort of proven that black is holding his own here. And I'd like to opt for something a little bit more complicated. And I also think at this point in theory a little bit more ambitious. The move d3. Now the move d3 in itself doesn't look quite that sharp. But it does keep all the pieces on the board. And some very very complicated positional battles can start from this variation. The first thing we have to look at is once again the move to g6. This is a very logical looking move. Now black wants to go for the natural bishop to g7, which is really the most normal square if you've already put your knight to e7. However, here we have a very clever idea for white and several good players have fallen for this idea already. Now white takes on d5 and after knight takes d5, d4, we actually see that this move g6 is rather clumsy. First of all, if black were to take, we can immediately see that he can't really take because the rook would come under attack and black is not able to comfortably develop on the king side. Likewise, he can opt for bishop to g7, but allowing this sort of structural damage doesn't strike me as a, the very best idea in this position. And perhaps after something like c4, although there's probably other good moves as well, this looks quite a bit better for white. So g6 is actually considered to be a mistake, and after e takes d5, keep this trick in mind, white's already a little bit better. Other moves here are the moves h6 and um, b6. I'm going to be looking at both shortly. And then we will move on to d4, which is probably the most ambitious move for black. Um, we're getting into some sort of King's Indian structure. So for some of you who've watched my series on the King's Indian, you'll probably be happy with this type of position. Other players might be a little bit reluctant to go for this, but believe me, it's not quite the same. And uh, I think you've got very easy active piece play in this variation, although it might not look like that for the moment. So we'll get to the move d4. First of all, I faced h6 several times in this position, and the idea is actually quite straightforward. Black wants to probably go g5, which is a lot sharper and a lot more aggressive. But imagine we would go for something like knight to d2, g5, 
this was one of my games and here we try to do something similar like e takes d5 e takes d5 g4 uh, d4 then g4 might be a good idea however in this position particularly because i do still think that white should react in the center after something like g5 it's very logical when black is kind of underdeveloped and starts expansion on the king side so early to strike in the center after e takes d5 knight to b3 it seems to me that black is falling under some unpleasant uh, pressure over here because he already has some problems defending the c pawn and uh, of course after g4 now among others we have um, a, knight, a square on d2 but also on h4 so after e takes d5 over here which looks a little bit better compared to um sorry knight takes d5 over here which looks a little bit more logical because d4 is not quite an option right away uh, again knight to b3 and this was my game against the indian grandmaster aravind he continued with g4 and after knight d2 f5 knight c4 b5 knight to e3 it looks like my knights are getting kicked around but at the end of the day we see that black is very much underdeveloped and threatening to take on f5 and after bishop to e7 knight takes d5 queen takes d5 e takes d5 already was losing a pawn as well uh, queen takes d5 bishop to e3 followed by c4 i had a very good position and uh, white was significantly better so h6 is kind of a creative idea but it simply doesn't really work uh, it's too early in the game to start thinking about h6 g5 types of ideas still this idea has been played a couple of times i'm not quite sure why but um, it's good to know that you can go knight d2 and still trust that basically knight b3 and d4 ideas are there. Okay, another much better move in my opinion is to move b6. And this is actually one of the moves that I am least sure about on the white side. I think this is a useful, not even waiting move, but just a useful move aiming to develop the bishop to b7. This was played against my friend Eric Hansen from Canada by the Ukrainian grandmaster Yuri Kuzubov. And I think white should probably just go for something like knight to d2. And after bishop to b7, one idea could be to go g3. And we see that we're kind of reaching some sort of strange looking in King's Indian type of position. I'm also not quite sure whether this is a good setup against the normal King's Indian. So still kind of like this position for white. But it is unclear and it's not as if we have a huge advantage. Um, g6 now would make a lot of sense. And here I would personally go for something like e5 get into this structure when i i always feel that white has the easier play in this type of position uh, for example imagine that black castles after queen c7 we can always develop our queen to e2 and most of the time what we'll see is that white tries to go something like h4 maybe bishop h3 get the knight f1 h2 very typical sort of attacking play in this variation now if for example black castles we can go bishop g2 first uh, already preparing for d4 as well. It's always arguable whether the bishop should go to h3 or g2. In this case, I suggested bishop to g2. Queen e7, queen e2. And exactly this type of position is um, what I would invite you to try out as white. Now, I understand that the engines are maybe not crazy about it. It's probably around equal. But if you look at the structure that's appearing, I feel that white's attacking chances here are a lot faster and... I personally always uh, find it very hard to play these types of positions on the black side, and most players do. Uh, once again, it's not maybe a very straightforward way for, of, way for white to play, but I also feel that black setup against this King's Indian type of attack isn't ideal. Therefore, if you do not agree with me on this variation, I will be very honest. B6 is one of the moves that still strikes me as very interesting and very unexplored. I believe only about six games have been played on the Grandmaster level. Um, but for the moment, I have not been able to find a clear-cut advantage for white. Another approach here would be the move instead of g3, if that's not to your taste, is the move a4. And one of the main ideas is that if black goes for g6 now, you could go e takes d5, knight takes d5, knight b3, and you're sort of... Um, playing around with the idea of playing a5 and damaging the structure, especially if the bishop leaves, then the c5 pawn could be under pressure. So bishop to g7, a5 would be a good idea. However, after a4, I was struggling to find a good move if, if black tries to play some sort of a useful waiting move like queen is c7. 
Uh, obviously, we can still go for the plan of G3, but I'm not quite sure that's a version that we should aim for. I uh, don't feel like A4 is definitely is for sure a good move in that King's Indian type of position. And if we keep waiting with a move like C3, then Black will go Rook to D8. And eventually now he's actually able, instead of going for G6, when still probably ideas with ED and Knight B3, A5 could be annoying. Uh, he can actually try to go for another type of approach by playing Knight to G6 and developing the Bishop to E7. So also here... Um, once again, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, this is this is a really trusted line for, for black e6, but this move b6 uh, is something that I expect to become a little bit more trendy. And it's, for the moment, not entirely clear whether white's really better or simply has to go for the king's Indian looking position, which I personally really enjoy. But once again, I do invite you to look at this b6 move. Yet, this is really not the main line yet, and I do want to move on to that move. So after d3, d4, we enter um, more common ter territory. This was actually played in uh, probably the stem game, which was Grishuk versus Gelfand, and I believe it was played in the London candidates um, several years ago. Here white should go e5 immediately. Of course, we could also allow the move e5, but I'm not a big fan of it because the rook on e1 looks very silly in a king's Indian. So if we would go something like g3, e5, then, well, as we all know, one of the main ideas for black, for, for white or for black in the King's Indian is to go f4 and the rook on e1 really doesn't serve that purpose. Besides that, we still have to develop our bishop. So e5 is really the, the only move here that you can um, comfortably play. But it's a good move. We're planning to go knight d2, knight e4 or knight c4 and we have some extra space on the king side. And black should probably go for knight to d5 over here. There are several other options. For example, knight g6 looks logical, but after g3, followed by queen e2 and h4, I'm not a really big fan of black's position. And I think white's a little bit better, as especially with h4, h5, he creates a very easygoing initiative. Other moves include b5, but also here, I think white's better if he goes for the um, move a4 followed by knight a3, highlighting that maybe b5 is a little bit overextending black's position. So bishop to b7 and here knight a3. And I feel that after something like knight g6, bishop d2, black is actually struggling to keep this pawn over here. Queen b6 is not quite the, the way you want to go either, since I will follow up with h4, h5 very quickly again. And of course b4, knight to c4 doesn't look very good either. So... The main move here and the move that was played by Boris Gelfon is to go knight to d5. And after c4, d takes c3. Of course, black could make any other move, but it would be kind of a waste of time. Also, once again, as we saw in the previous variation where the King's Indian structure with g3 sort of arose, this is a very tough structure for black to play because the only way for him to open up the positions would be b5, where we can normally play b3 and plays very slow on the queen side, where definitely black's play should come from, if, if it's coming from anywhere. So d takes c3 is kind of a logical move with respect to that. So b takes c3, and here, if black goes b5, then the immediate c4 once again does give white a very pleasant position. For example, knight to b6, bishop to g5, and if we exchange the bishops, white goes knight c3, and we see already that some of these um, Especially the d6 square is quite weakened, but also on the queen side, I simply think that black is struggling a little bit. If he decides to go for b4, knight e4, he has to watch out for d4 very soon. And Well, I suggest you look at these lines a little deeper into the e in the ebook, but um, this tends to be quite a bit better for white. Instead, Boris Gelfand came up with a very creative idea to go rook to b8 here, and I consider it the main line um, since he's the strongest player who has tried this line on the black side or faced this variation. And here, um, Grishuk played bishop to b2, which I do suggest you follow. Other moves are also interesting, for example, a3. But once again, I think black could make a waiting move with something like um, queen to c7. And after c4, now he still has the option of going knight e7, knight f5. That's really one of the main ideas of waiting, for bishop, waiting to play bishop to e7, so the knight can maneuver back. And even though it looks like it's losing a lot of time, it's not that easy for us to directly attack um, black. Instead, in, after rook to b8, I suggest you go bishop to b2, preparing perhaps immediately c4 and d4. 
And here after b5, we sort of see what the idea after rook b, uh, over b8 was. Now after c4, our bishop on b2 is hanging. And after the following logical moves, knight e2, bishop to e7, knight e4, short castle, um, we see that white really wants to play, at least I would really want to play c4 here and build up some sort of attacking uh, scheme, especially with the bishop on b2 being well placed for some of these sacrifices that we can see with knight f6. And therefore the most probably um, logical move is to go rook to b1, just covering the bishop and preparing c4. Here, <clears throat> knight to b6 is my main move. Black could go for something like f5, but it's not very positionally sound after takes takes and knight ed2. I think the weakness on e6 is quite significant compared to White's only slightly awkwardly played pawn, placed pawns, but uh, I don't think this is a very good position for black. Um, so rook to b1, uh, if queen c7, now we see that we can play something like queen c1 and c4 cannot really be stopped. Um, rook d8, c4, and immediately we see just for illustration, how powerful this bishop on b2 can be. Because it might look a little confusing at first why we're putting the bishop to b2, but this is really one of the major uh, threats and ideas. And after some sacrifice like this, I do not even take the liberty of analyzing it much further, but I imagine that uh, this is going into the wrong direction after something like queen h5 and knight g5. It looks horribly dangerous with so many pieces left on the board. Also, the rook could swing in, so maybe rook e4 immediately was even stronger. So <clears throat> going back to rook to b1, I think knight b6 is the best move since it's preparing for c4. I suggest you go queen to d2. c4 would now at least allow exchange of the queens, which might not really be in our favor since we're trying to set up a kingside attack. Uh, so queen d2, and after something like c4, queen f4. Obviously, this is all fairly new territory, so these are really my suggestions and my ideas uh, for the most. Um, queen d2 is actually a novelty over the previously mentioned game Grishuk versus uh, Galfon in the London Candidates 2013. Um, here Grishuk played bishop to a1, which strikes me as a little bit uh, unnecessary. It might prepare for something like knight a4, but I just don't think you need to lose time for this move. And um, after queen d2, c4 could be the idea because of course we're closing in our bishop quite badly if we go for d4. But I would allow the structural damage and uh, let black play c takes d3 and just swing my queen over to the king side with queen f4. And after c3, cd, rook d1, um, something like queen c7, bishop to c1. I'm a big fan of a position like this as white. I just see a lot of potential of getting a mating attack going. And once again, I think most of the territory in this variation is very unexplored. That's why it might not be the most safe recommendation on my part, but I do think that the e6 variation is one that might very well be the most solid at the moment and theoretically very sound. And I really don't think that the other lines, which are a little bit more solid for white, such as going for the exchange on d5 over here, promise white all that much. I think black has figured out what to do there. So if you wanna go for the most complicated struggle, I definitely advise you to go d3. Um, it leads to very complicated positions. Thus far, I've been very successful here as white. I have enjoyed um, playing this position a lot. It might not be as attractive to you if you're not a, very comfortable with playing the King's Indian, but I do think that even though it bears some resemblances here and there, it still has kind of its char a character of its own. So I hope you enjoyed this recommendation. Next on, we're going to be looking at other moves for black after we move bishop to b5. And I'll see you back. Thank you for watching.